allow me to remind you what your heart looks like. And this one's been sliced in half. It's got labels stuck all over it on a white background. But this is, of course, a heart. And if you're sort of inclined at this point, feel free to pause the video and just remind yourselves of some of the structures of the heart. Just make sure that you're comfortable with what's going on there. Because what I'd like to talk about right now is the phases of contraction and relaxation of the heart. So I'm actually going to start this straight away by just labeling something phase one. Well, or describing something as phase one of the heart. Okay, And I'm going to tell you that this phase one is what we refer to as atrial atrial diastole okay atrial diastole and can i remind you that the word diastole means relaxation phase okay uh, re relaxation phase so what's happening during this atrial diastole is effectively what we're getting here is we're getting the the actual um filling of blood in the upper part of the heart right so this atrial diastole it's relaxation now what we're finding in the ventricles if i was to put the same thing we've got now in the ventricle if i was to in fact so let me do it this way i'll put i'll put ventricle as a heading up here ventricle and i'll put um i'll put atria as a heading up here look so we'll do it that way ventricles atria but what's happening in the ventricles is we're getting the end of systole so this is a really interesting point for you to start off with here okay as the atria relaxing the, the systole of the ventricles is actually end, ending. Remember, the systole is the contractile phase. So as the ventricles are just finishing off, squeezing inwards and upwards like this, what's happening is the atria are relaxing and they are filling. And like I stress to you, we are getting filling of the atria in this case. Okay, So that's actually what's occurring. Now, if we move on to a second phase, and I'll just call this phase two, I'll call this phase two. What are we getting here? Well, in phase two, in the atria now, we are having that we now have atrial systole. I think I've got the same yellow there, have I? Yeah. So the atria now are going through systole. So the atria are squeezing in and downwards through their contractile phase. And of course, what they're doing is they're squeezing blood down into the ventricles. In order for that to happen, the ventricles must be going through, there's an eye in there, by the way, just there, the ventricles have to be going through diastole. So what we're finding that's actually occurring is the atria now empty. So they empty what they've been filled up with, the, the blood, venous return in essence, the atria empty and the ventricles fill. So we've got this passing via the atrioventricular valves. We've got this passing of blood down from the atria into the ventricles. In order for that to happen, the atria must be through systole and the ventricles must be going through diastole. So that's what I'm going to describe as phase two. And then phase three, I think you can probably imagine where this is going. Phase three is going to be the following. We're going to get that the atria now they're now going to go through diastole. And this is actually really important. I'll stress why in a second. Remember, diastole is relaxation phase. And now the ventricles are going to be going through systole. So I said before, of course, what we're going to get now is that, the, again, the ventricles are squeezing up. And we're going to get back to the end of that cycle in a second. The ventricles are squeezing up and outwards. But in order for blood to actually leave here and here, of course, the atria need to be in their relaxation phase, which is why they're going through diastole. So what do we get? In this particular environment, well, we get the ventricles empty, or emptying would be a better way of putting it. Ventricles, they are emptying, and we are getting, of course, the atria, and I'm going to really stress the word begin, begin to fill again. Now, of course, that by definition, that by definition is back to phase one. Can you can, so? Can you see? Oi, didn't mean to do that. Can you see for me that the end of phase three is effectively the start of phase one and we repeat that cycle? So this phasing is really important. Now, the big takeaways I'd like you to have here, first of all, is the language of systole and diastole and the way this happens. I'm not going to go through the exact timings of this, although you can go and study that if you're interested. You can get sort of resting um, typical values for what how each of these phases sort of uh, how long it takes. But the big picture I want to get, and I'm actually going to stress to you, I'm going to tell you this is important important the big picture i want you to take away with this is that your stroke volume and that is that you that's obviously you know the amount of blood leaving the heart per contraction is dependent dependent on venous return so in other words 
The amount of blood actually coming back to the heart, which of course is our venous return, is indicative of the amount of blood that's going to leave the heart, and that is of course our stroke volume. So this is a really important point. Second one, we've got something called the all or none law, and I will mention this to you in numerous environments when we look at cardiovascular systems. But the all or none law says that this muscular pump, it either contracts fully or not at all, okay? So this is a full contraction of this heart and that's gonna become really important to us. And finally, the, the last important thing, I wanna to stress to you that not all blood leaves the heart, okay? Now there's two points that I could make off this, not all blood leaves the heart. We could say, well, some of it's redistributed back to the heart to actually sustain the heart with nourishment, with oxygen, etc. And that's obviously like our coronary circuitry. But I also wanna to stress to you that when these ventricles, let's take the left, left ventricle, let's say it's filled like this during diastole, when this contracts through systole, a proportion of this blue mess that I've put in here, this blood, remains in the heart. And if you really want to know what that's called, it's called, the, or the quantity of it is called an ejection fraction, the ratio between what's pumped out and what's left in there. So not all the, the, the ventricles can't completely crush down on themselves and eject every single cell or, or piece of plasma of the blood. But the vast majority does leave. And the proportion of that, if you're interested, is called the ejection fraction. And more healthy hearts, stronger hearts, are better at reduce, at, at, at having a better ejection fraction, more blood of the proportion leaving the heart. And that's where the, you know things like hypertrophy of the heart and strengthening actually helps us. I hope that is helpful from the cardiac cycle perspective. Nice and simple, I believe. A little bit of language to learn. Look after that heart.